by weight replace or or displace lighter <coughs> lighter chemicals in your body such as copper and zinc. Okay. So what do you need zinc for? Well, there are actually a hundred <coughs> enzymes that count on zinc for their function, either for their their production of or for their um, function of. And as an aside, anybody who has children or grandchildren with ADHD, they've actually found that 45% of the children who have ADD and ADHD have a zinc deficiency and 35% have a copper deficiency. But as you see, you need zinc for good muscles, for strong bones, for, for neurotransmitters, for good hair, for skin. It's really invaluable. And zinc deficiencies, well, of course, there's a lot more than, but just a few. Low libido, PMS, a loss of taste, not having the same taste for food or anorexia. So what are the sources of mercury? Well, you all have heard about fish or your, your cavities are filled with dental amalg amalgams. But look where else. You know all that, that antiseptic that you, they're pushing the you know, the, the hand antiseptics. Well, the reason why it's antiseptic is because it has mercury in it. Um, and we're giving it to our kids, we're giving it in the hospitals, it's everywhere. It, it was actually brilliant marketing. Um, fabric softener, paints, tattoos, perfumes. Now, you wouldn't think like that would be in your perfume, but it is. So what are some of the symptoms? Memory loss, anemia, headaches, um, inflamed gums, weakness, fatigue, anorexia. Okay. And sources of lead. Well, we all know, you know, that we used to use lead paint, but it's not around anymore, right? Because we don't use it. But it is. As a matter of fact, we, I had a child that we were treating for high lead, and we couldn't find out where the lead was when we realized somebody had come from another country and brought the child like a little mug. And even though we don't use lead paint in America, you know, over where the person came from used lead paint, and that's where the child got lead toxicity from. So it's here and it's around. But also where else? Gasoline, ceramics, cast iron. If any of you think that, you know, cooking with cast iron is good, it, you may want to think again. Um, hair dyes, rinses, okay, and arsenic. And you say, well, where, where could we get arsenic? Well, most of the playground equipment, that the wooden playground equipment that the children play on are treated with arsenic as a deterrent. A um, couple of, I guess, years back, a lot of the apples had um, arsenic and was in the apple juice, so a lot of apple juice had to be recalled. So arsenic is also where you wouldn't think it was. Okay. These are sources of aluminum. And I find when we do, here at Patients Medical, when you come to us, we will often do heavy metal testing, and very often I will find aluminum to be one of the higher higher levels that we detect. Okay. So of course we know caffeine's no good for you, alcohol's no good for you, recreational drugs are no good for you. But does anybody have any idea what is the worst toxin that you can possibly have, either recreational drug, prescription drug, or over-the-counter drug? The absolute worst toxicity is Tylenol. Um, and of course, you know, refined sugar, refined uh, foods, refined and processed foods, meats that contain hormones and antibiotics, artificial food additives. So toxins are pretty much everywhere. And, and I don't think we, we think enough about them. <coughs> These are just some of the medicines that are common that, and 
on the right hand side is what they deplete. And the reason why it's very important to know what medicines you're taking and what they deplete in your body, because in a couple of slides from now, you're going to see why B12 is important, you know, why zinc is important, why magnesium is important, and what that means to your own personal detoxification. MSG, it's everywhere. Anytime you see natural food, natural chicken flavor, natural beef flavor, that has MSG. Natural flavorings in general, that has MSG in it. And this is according to the FDA, this is the MSG complex syndrome. Numbness, tingling, headaches, nausea, rapid heartbeat, chest pain, difficulty breathing. So what are the internal? Of course, there are some people with bacterial or yeast overgrowth, um, undigested food, and stress. And you say, well, how could stress be considered a toxin? Because stress is, is, tox is toxic to your adrenal glands, and you need your adrenal glands for pretty much your whole being. Um, unresolved trauma or abuse, unhappy relationships. Have you ever heard of toxic people or toxic personalities? Well, they're, they're very real in your world. So what are the symptoms? Multiple chemical sensitivities when you hear, oh, I'm allergic to everything. You have to think toxins. You know, fatigue, I'm, I'm tired, I can't sleep enough, I get up, I'm still tired. ADD, ADHD, inability to lose weight. You know, you hear, I eat right, I know what to eat, I'm drinking my water, I'm going to the gym, and I still can't lose weight. Adrenal fatigue, constipation, bloating, diarrhea. People who are always getting sick. People who just are very achy. Anger, irritability, skin disorders, dark circles under the eyes, unable to sleep. So how do we determine it? We, we, after a careful history and physical, we will run blood tests, urine tests, stool tests, and saliva tests. So how does the body detach? Well, you detach yourself. You detach through sweating, you detach through your urine, and you detach through stool. And fat-soluble toxins, those are for water-soluble toxins. But fat-soluble toxins have to be made water-soluble, and therefore they count on the liver. Okay. There are two phases to detoxification. Phase one is where water, the fat-soluble toxins become water-soluble. And you see, like I was just telling you, why you need all your vitamins and your minerals. B2, B3, B6, B12, folic acid, glutathione we're going to talk about in a little bit more depth in a couple of minutes. And then to make them water-soluble and pass out, you need cysteine, magnesium, C, B5, B12, folic acid, So how can you detox? Well, drinking plenty of water, sweating, exercising increases your metabolism. Massage therapy not only helps you relax, but it also will um, help with lymphatic drainage. Sleeping properly is, I can't tell you how important sleep is. Yoga, deep breathing, oxygenation, meditation, healthy diet. Infrared sauna helps you sweat. Hyperbaric oxygen, which we have here at Patients Medical, um, increases your oxygen level and helps you metabolize. If needed, we can and we're prepared to do IV chelation. We do IV supplemental drips as well. And of course, supplements. We actually have here somebody specifically um, in our supplement room who is extremely well versed in all the supplements. So what are some of the supplements we recommend? 
You can't really take glutathione by mouth. It's not really effective. So we know what, what supplements will augment um, your own personal glutathione production. Milk thistle is very important to help your liver and cleanse your liver. Chlorella is just a good detox in general. Um, glutamine is very important for healing your gut. And probiotics help with cellular waste. is about abundance, and health is about actually delicious food. A lot of people think, you know, detoxification, they think deprivation, they think starvation, they think they're going to not eat for 10 days, they're going to drink green juice for 10 days, and they're going to have to just push through it. And so we know that's not true, and one of the things I love to do in this culinary world is to make meals that are nourishing, delicious, full of cruciferous vegetables, full of detoxifying foods like we're going to show you today. And so um, one of my mottos is really, you know, let thy food be, let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine thy food, um, either way you say it. It's really one of the most profound things we can do um, as a culture because never in the, the history of human existence have we had so many toxins in our world. Um, babies are being born with toxins in their umbilical cord, detectable toxins. Um, Dr. Denise just talked about, you know, really scary toxins like aluminum, like um, mercury, right? And these are all things that are hiding everywhere in like our day-to-day our -day life and it's scary. And so that's why it's really, really super important that we take care of our body through food. And whenever I work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, because I'm also, you know, I do nutrition coaching, lectures, and um, uh, cooking demos, I say food first and then supplements. Always. Food first and then supplements. About four months into people working with me, then we address the supplements, unless there's some sort of dire need and, and we need to do that. I'm a firm believer in food first. And today we're going to have a really delicious green smoothie. I know mean, you've heard a lot of craze about green smoothies, right? Mm -hmm. Seen on the streets, on TV, they're everywhere. And I'm actually going to, at the end, take a minute to address the juicing and the smoothing, the smoothie uh, difference, in my opinion on that, because that's, that's pretty important, I believe. So health actually started for me when I was not so well. Health started a sickness for me. Uh, about six years ago now, I was in like a car accident, a relationship ended, um, you know, I lost a job, all these things happened in like seven days. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, I kind of spun into a, a, a state of anxiety and depression. And I was really trying to get out of that because it was not comfortable. You know, I couldn't sleep at night. I was having adrenal fatigue because I was so anxious. And I was really living off, you know, Gatorade. I was living off Frosted Flakes. I was living off, you know, chicken parm subs. I was living off Cheetos. You know, I had played college basketball. And that got me through college basketball. So I figured, you know, that's healthy. You know, I'm, I'm fit. I'm active. I can run. But at that time in my life, what my body, my mind, and my soul needed was nourishing foods, foods that were live, that were organic, that were fresh. And that was pretty much devoid in my life. And so I went to all the doctors for about a year, and I said, you know, I really would like some help. I don't feel comfortable with medications. But that's pretty much the prescription they all gave me. You know, back then I didn't know about patients' medical. I wish then I had known and I'd been able to come here and work with these holistic doctors that are going to look at the whole body and not just, you know, the, the depression. You know, we think depression starts here. And, well, where does serotonin come from, right? Anybody know? When serotonin starts in the small intestine, the gut. And so no doctor ever said to me, what are you having for breakfast? Are you deficient in omega-3 fatty acids? You know, are you detoxifying? And so no doctor ever asked me this. And so it took years for me to kind of find my own way, and I did, and uh, here I am. And so this is what I do to work with uh, the people who come to me and the groups of women who I work with. Um, so again, this is what I do. I do a lot of individual health coaching programs, work, um, workshops like this, cooking demos, private cooking classes. I actually have a lot of online courses as well, which are fun because it's great to get people from you know, Asia and South America and everything jumping online for boot camps and stuff like that. Uh, I'm actually in the middle of a four-week sugar boot camp, which is fantastic, so I run that three times a year. And uh, the 10-day Whole Foods Winter Detox, which I'll talk to you guys about the, uh, at the end, which is a fantastic way to understand how to detox how to make it fit into your life without, you know, um, feeling like, you know, you're just living on juice the whole time. Because that's not really what detoxing is about. 
and the ingredients that I use really in my practice and when I work with people, I work with whole foods, I work organic, I work as much as possible locally and seasonally. It's always it's a little hard to do that in this day and age, but that's what I always try to do. Um, and mindset shifts. Mind, I always say that health begins in the mind and then we can really work with the food. So um, I'm really excited to talk to you guys and be here today at Patients Medical, one of the best uh, medical facilities I've ever seen and um, I'm really excited that there's this merging of you know, integrative and functional medicine because we need it. It's the future of healthcare. Okay? So um, if you haven't already gathered, food has a profound capacity to make you sick or make you really, you know, vibrant and alive and mentally clear and energetically, um, you know, robust and balanced. So what are, some, what are some meals for you guys that you know when you eat right away they put you to sleep? Chicken. Okay. Chicken? Turkey. Okay. Big heavy meals. What Sugar. else? Sugar. Sugar bombs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it gets you, you know, really energetic in the beginning, and then right after that it's like, bam, right? Mm -hmm. What else makes you, what are some other meals that just, you know, you know if you eat, you're going to fall asleep in about two hours. Chinese food. Pizza. Pizza. Yeah. I mean, I think Thanksgiving, like the, the turkey coma, right? You joke about that. So that, and really what we're talking about here is hormones, okay, at the end of the day. And one of the best hormones that you can balance in your life that I do through food is insulin. If you can balance insulin through food regulation, stress management, you're on your way to success. When one hormone's out of whack, they're all out of whack, okay? So um, one of the ways I'm going to show you how to do that is through the smoothie today and also through the recipes on my website and through the detox that I'll be offering you guys. So here we go. Who wants to try the smoothie? The recipe is here. If you want to take this out, you can. Um, yes. I have a question about purchasing coconut water because I read the label and I don't know the brand that I should use. Um, either, it, it's hard to because there are some brands that are owned by um, companies that don't have great ethics and or you know, like Pepsi, I think, owns some of the coconut water companies. So there's a couple companies that are like new and up and coming. They're 100% raw coconut. Uh, there's one I've seen that says like literally 100% raw coconut water, um, and I've heard that they take the quality care of their product and their employees. So it is hard to, to tell, um, but um, you want to look for 100% raw coconut when you can. It's a harder to find. Does the, the Whole Foods have it, or yeah, they would. Most health food stores would have it, um, and Whole Foods I think has a couple selections of that. So continue to there. All right, who wants to try a smoothie? I'm hungry. Right. Perfect. That's what I like. So you, again, you can follow along with the actual recipe. I believe we will have, um, as we go through, I'll just talk about some of the ingredients. And if you could actually just hit the next slide, I'll probably just talk about the ingredients. So um, Dr. Denise mentioned uh, cruciferous vegetables. Can anybody name some cruciferous vegetables? Broccoli cauliflower. <laughs> okay, just kidding. It's on the board, right? I knew that. Okay, anything else that's not on the board? Uh, okay, I think you get the point. Cruciferous vegetables are really rich in two main components. One is called endo-free carbonyl, which is a fantastic way, um, that is a fantastic component that helps detoxify uh, your liver, which we talked about earlier. Dr. Nice mentioning the liver has two phases of detoxification. And certain components from our food uh, really enhance that detoxification process. You know, we are detoxing right now. Right now, as you speak, your body's detoxing. Your liver is working, your kidneys filtering, okay? And so certain foods are gonna enhance that, and certain foods, like sugar and our refined foods and our alcohol, are gonna really, you know, make our liver uh, have a tough job that day. And so we really wanna make sure that we're giving our liver and our body the right foods to enhance the, the uh, detoxification process. Yeah? Should they be eaten raw for that, or is roasted okay for that? For kale or for cruciferous? The only reason you might ever want to steam or cook your cruciferous vegetables is, is if you have a thyroid condition. Um, there's been a, a lot of discussion um, that the goitrogens in, in um, cruciferous vegetables and millet uh, are, are you know, taken care of or gone when, you are, when you're cooking them. They're rendered um, less harmful. So if someone comes to me with hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's, I would say cook your, your kale, steam your kale, um, steam your broccoli or cauliflower. But mostly uh, you can have them raw. If, oh, no, if you want. I'd rather cook them. Yeah, I'd rather cook them too for the most part. <laughs> Kale's like the only, only way I can have uh, kale raw is in a smoothie. So I'm going to do about two cups of our lovely filtered water here. And so kale is super, super important. If you can get, yes, spinach is also very important. It's one of the one things they told us that was true when we were growing up. You know, a lot of the false <laughs> things like 
They had ads about like drink Coke, it's good for your brain. You should have seen the ads they had, you know, 30, 40 years ago. If you can remember them, it was absolute. It, it's criminal. But that's actually one thing I can say. Good job. I'm glad you got spinach. It makes you strong in our head. So um, I'm just going to go through each ingredient. I'm just going to add them right in, so you guys can get tasting pretty soon. This is just kale. Okay, one cup of kale. Pretty simple. We're going to add in for some sweetness. We're going to add in one whole green apple. It doesn't matter whether you're using green or red or any other variety, or are you just doing that for the flavor? Um, I'm doing this mainly for flavor, and, and green apples are a fantastic. You usually use a lot in juicing, um, mainly. I, I think they're a little bit lower in sugar, and they're, they're healthier for us. So I generally use these. I'm a sucker for honey crisp apples, though. I mean, come on. <laughs> this is about a quarter cup of uh, parsley. Parsley is incredible at detoxifying and removing heavy metals in your body. It's really, really powerful. So is cilantro. You could equally do cilantro in here. I love mint. Um, not as, not, it is great for detoxification, but not quite as powerful as parsley. So we're going to do about a quarter cup of parsley, or even half cup if you feel like you're really daring. And this is about um, a third or half of cucumber, which really adds to sort of a nice cooling, cleansing flavor to the, to the uh, smoothie. You take the skin off? Um, I, I do. Um, it, it, I usually feel the, the spinach and see, I feel the cucumber and see if it's really rough, uh, the skin. Usually when I'm cooking, if I'm making salads, I won't. I have, I have access to my chronic cucumbers. All right. Well, next time you bring them. Well, no, he's right here. He sells in New York. Okay. At the farmer's market, uh, two guys from Woodbridge. Cool. Everything is hard to make. That's awesome. And I'm getting cucumbers right now from him. Well, you're the luckiest person in this room. I wish I had them. I just moved here six months ago from Asia, so I'm still getting my way around New York City and finding out where to get the best produce. I think it's the farmer's market that's down in Lower Manhattan. Union Square. Square. Union Square Market. At two, two, two guys from Woodbridge. Okay, I'll right. check them out. Thank you. This is a little bit of uh, lemon. Okay, one of the best ways I start my day before I put anything in my body, before I even have breakfast, is a huge tall glass of lemon, or basically lemon water. It's fantastic for you know filtering and detoxifying the liver. It helps alkalize your body. Even though it's acidic on the outside, we use it as acid in cooking, but actually it leaves an alkaline ash in your digestive system. How so it helps lemon? alkalize. This is um, about juice from one half of a lemon. Yes. So if you suffer from acid reflux, uh, is this something you shouldn't be doing in the morning? Um, no, that's not going to affect you. It's not going to affect you. So there's but other protocols. Yeah, can there's. You can do that lemon in hot water or something. Well, I always drink everything warm. I don't drink too many cold things yeah. in life, but sure, yeah. yeah. So warm lemon water, that's not going to affect it. There's a different protocol for acid reflux for sure, and diet plays a big part in that. Okay, um, this is just our lemon. And I'm going to add a little bit of our, of our orange. Um, I usually don't use a lot of orange in my cooking or in my life just because I, I don't use a lot of fruit. And the reason I don't use a lot of fruit, I won't talk this much throughout the whole thing, don't worry. The reason I don't use a lot of fruit is because fruit is really high in fructose, okay? And fructose is filtered by our liver. And when we are, again, putting so much strain on our liver, not only with the toxins, but excess fructose. You know, fruit has health promoting properties. Anti-inflammatory, it's got antioxidants. But when people are having three, four pieces of fruit a day, maybe it's pineapple, mango, oranges, it's a complete sugar bomb, especially if you're not pairing it with the right fats, the right fiber, the right protein to regulate blood sugar. So I'm going to use half of an orange, and that might give it a little sort of zesty sweetness for you guys. Um, but if you want, you can use a whole. If you're really new to green smoothies, you can start with a little bit more fruit and then filter back down. And then I'm going to do a little bit of our ginger. This ginger is awesome. So I'm just going to use a little bit. I'm not sure if anybody has any allergies to ginger. Okay. Just about half of a tablespoon. Pretty strong stuff. I use it daily in my cooking, usually when I saute or when I you know, steam fish, I'll use a lot of ginger. And I'm going to use avocado. We need, we need fat. Okay? Whoever told you fat is bad, fat makes you fat, please ignore them and walk away because that's not true. We know that excess sugar is what make, is making us fat. So I'm going to use about a half of an avocado. All right. All right, you get everything in? So. Now, um, I didn't bring these today, but one way I would uh, sort of balance this smoothie, because this does have fat, this does have fiber, and this does have protein, OK? 
Okay? I might add in a little chia seeds, flax seeds, and maybe some hemp seeds. Okay, so for extra omega-3s, I might add those in also to help um, with protein. To make this not just something that's going to hold me over for an hour, it's going to get me going through for, you know, three, four hours if I have this. Okay? Can you use chia powder? Sure, you can. Same thing. Okay. It's just you want to drink it quickly because chia absorbs water. That's its yeah. job, pretty much, um, except for omega-3s and protein. So it'll be really thick and gelatinous. So I'm just going to blend this. It's fairly loud, but it does a really good job. Chewing, 
where we're using foods that are detoxification, that, that detoxify by nature, burdock fruit and sea vegetables and different herbs and spices that naturally do that. And you're eating whole meals. Again, people think that when you detox, you're just juicing. You have to go to a faraway place like a spa to detox properly. You can detox in the comfort and the you know, routine of your own life. That's the, that's the purpose. Again, we're detoxing right now. So certain foods, yes, certain foods will enhance that. And so this 10-day detox is amazing, giving you a re renewed sense of health, uh, waking up with that mental clarity that Megan spoke about in the morning, that ability to juggle two or three jobs at work without being forgetful, without being highly irritated. And so from the culinary perspective, what we're detoxing from in this particular detox is refined sugars, uh, dairy, soy, which is a major problem in estrogen toxicity. That's really big. The only soy I ever use is fermented in small amounts. And um, we're, we're going to be able to kick cravings, and you're going to understand how to become a culinary master. Part of what I do when people see me is I hope they come and see me and I never see them again. I hope I've taught them everything they need to know in order to listen to their body. After our program, I hope I never see them again. <laughs> you know what I mean? I hope that I've taught them everything they need to know about how to listen to the human body, figure out what it needs, and then in 20, 30 years, if they say, oh, I'm getting you know, foggy thinking, I'm irritable, I'm not sleeping at night, they're going to know what to do. So that's part of what I hope you guys understand. After the end of this 10 day detox, with the videos and the recipe ebook and the menu plan, you'll understand how to, you know, 